It was a routine call for a minor repair, nothing special at first. I hadn't thought much about it. I was sixty, living alone in a quiet, predictable world, untouched by the excitement of desire for longer than I cared to admit. But that Wednesday afternoon, when Jacob stepped through my door young, strong and filled with a nervous charm, I felt something shift inside me. What started as an innocent moment soon spiraled into something far more dangerous. Our meetings, once professional, became filled with tension, and as I crossed boundaries I hadn't even known existed, the line between need and obsession blurred. I hadn't planned for this, hadn't expected it. But it had awakened something in me I could no longer ignore. I had been staring at the dripping sink for days, watching the water collect in the basin, a constant reminder of how little attention I paid to my surroundings now. After years of carefully curated home improvements, everything seemed pointless without someone to share them with. The house had grown too big after my divorce, each room echoing with memories I tried not to think about. The kitchen, once the center of our family life, had fallen into a quiet disrepair, much like me. So when the sink leak became too much to ignore, I did something I hadn't done in a long time I called for help. I found a local handyman, Jacob. The name didn't mean anything to me, just someone to get the job done. I expected a grizzled old man, experienced maybe a little rough around the edges, but when I opened the door that chilly Wednesday afternoon, I found myself staring at a young man in his twenties. Jacob stood there, towering over me, a toolbox in hand, wearing a simple gray shirt that stretched across his broad chest. He had a nervous smile that didn't quite reach his eyes, but there was something about him that immediately drew me in. Hi, I'm here to take a look at the sink, he said, his voice deep but soft. I blinked, startled for a moment by the way my heart skipped just slightly in my chest. It was an absurd reaction, really. At my age, those little sparks were supposed to be things of the past, and yet there it was a flicker of something I hadn't felt in years. Come in, I managed to say, stepping aside to let him into the house. I watched him as he moved through the space, his eyes scanning the kitchen with quiet focus. There was an efficiency to the way he worked, kneeling down to inspect the sink, his hands moving expertly over the pipes. I found myself lingering nearby, unable to look away. I stood by the kitchen island, pretending to be busy with something else, but my attention never left him. There was something about the way he moved, the strength in his arms as he tightened the bolts under the sink, the quiet concentration etched on his face. I hadn't been this close to a young man in years. I hadn't even thought about what it would be like until now. I couldn't quite explain it, but something inside me stirred. It wasn't just about his looks, though Jacob was undeniably attractive in that rugged, effortless way. No, it was the energy he brought into the room, a vitality that contrasted sharply with the silence that had settled over my life. There was a warmth to him, something I hadn't felt in so long. For a moment I caught myself leaning against the counter, watching him too closely. I adjusted my robe a robe I had never considered provocative until now, and straightened up, trying to shake the ridiculous thoughts that were creeping into my mind. Jacob looked up from his work, catching my eye. I could see the flicker of surprise in his expression as his gaze traveled quickly over me, then darted back to the sink. His cheeks flushed slightly, and I couldn't help but feel a small thrill at the reaction. It was innocent enough, but I felt something stirring that I hadn't allowed myself to feel for so long desire. I walked over to where he was kneeling, watching as he worked. He was focused, but there was an undercurrent of nervousness in the way his hands moved, as if he were trying not to acknowledge my presence too much. Everything going okay down there, I asked, my voice softer than I intended. He nodded, not looking up. Yeah, just a small leak. Should be fixed in a few minutes. I couldn't help myself. I reached out and lightly touched his shoulder, just a gentle squeeze. 
His body tensed under my hand, and I felt the thrill of power that came with knowing I had affected him. It was a feeling I hadn't experienced in years, and I wasn't ready to let it go just yet. You're really strong, I said, my voice taking on a slightly more flirtatious tone. He looked up at me, startled, his face flushing even more. Ah, uh, thanks. I smiled at him, a soft, knowing smile. I could feel the tension building between us, thickening the air in the small space of my kitchen. It was unspoken, but it was there. He shifted uncomfortably, clearly trying to stay professional, but the way his hands trembled slightly as he tightened the last bolt told me everything I needed to know. I stepped a little closer, leaning over the counter, watching his every move. He stood up, wiping his hands on a rag, and I could see the way he was avoiding my gaze now, trying to maintain his composure. You need any help, I asked, knowing full well he didn't. He shook his head quickly, focusing on packing up his tools, but his hands were shaking. I reached out again, this time letting my fingers brush against his arm, feeling the warmth of his skin under my touch. He froze for a moment, and I could see the internal struggle playing out in his eyes. There was a part of him that wanted to give in. I could tell, but there was also a part of him that knew better. He was younger, and I was a woman who should have known better, too. But in that moment, it didn't matter. I let my hand linger on his arm, feeling the tension between us crackle like electricity. He looked at me, his breath shallow, his eyes wide and uncertain. For a moment, I thought he might step forward, close the distance between us, but then he took a step back, breaking the spell. Ma am he stammered, his voice shaky. I'm just here to fix the sink. I smiled softly amused by how flustered he was. Are you sure there's nothing else that needs fixing, I asked, my voice teasing now. He looked like he didn't know whether to stay or run. His hands were trembling as he gathered the last of his tools, and I could see the way he was struggling to maintain control. I took a step closer, my lips just inches from his. There's something else you could take care of for me, I whispered, my voice low and suggestive. He didn't respond, just stared at me, frozen in place. I leaned in, as if I were about to kiss him again, but before I could, he took a quick step back, his hands up in front of him as if to ward me off. I can't, he said, shaking his head. I really can't. I pouted, feeling a little disappointed, but I knew he wasn't going to give in. Not yet, anyway. He left in a hurry, practically running out of the house, leaving me standing there in the kitchen, alone again. But there was something about the way he left it wasn't just the awkwardness. There was a tension that hung in the air, something unfinished, something unresolved. And I knew, deep down, that while Jacob had said no, it wasn't because he wasn't interested, it was because he didn't trust himself not to say yes. The days that followed were a strange mix of excitement and frustration. I couldn't stop thinking about Jacob, about the way he had hesitated, the way his eyes had lingered on me just a little too long. It had been years since I'd felt this way since I'd felt anything, really, and now suddenly there was this young man who had stirred something inside me, something I thought had long since died. I didn't expect to see him again. I figured he had probably told himself he wouldn't come back, that he couldn't come back. But then, about a week later, my phone rang. I didn't recognize the number, but when I answered, it was him. Hi, uh, this is Jacob, the plumber. I was just calling to check if everything's okay with the sink. Did the fix hold up? His voice was polite, professional even, but I could hear the tremble beneath it. He was nervous, and that thrilled me more than I cared to admit. Oh, Jacob, I said, trying to keep my tone casual, though I knew exactly where this was going. Funny you should ask. The sink is fine, but there's another issue in the bathroom I was hoping you could take a look at. It's probably nothing major, but I wouldn't feel right if I didn't have a professional check it out. There was a pause on the other end of the line. 
I could hear him weighing his options, deciding whether he should come back. I can be there in about an hour, he said finally. When I hung up, I couldn't help but smile to myself. This time, I had no intention of letting him off so easily. When Jacob arrived, he was visibly more nervous than the first time. He tried to maintain his usual calm, professional demeanor, but I could see the tension in his shoulders the way he avoided my gaze as I led him upstairs to the bathroom. The issue with the faucet was minor, just a loose handle, but I knew it wasn't the faucet that brought him back. As he worked, I stood nearby, watching him in silence. The air between us was thick with unspoken tension, the kind that made my skin tingle. He was more focused this time, keeping his head down, his eyes on the work. But I could tell he was more aware of me now, more aware of the space between us. I couldn't resist any longer. Jacob, I said softly, stepping a little closer, I've been thinking about you. He paused for a moment, his hand tightening around the faucet. He didn't look up, but I could see the way his knuckles turned white, the way his breathing quickened just slightly. You have his voice was cautious, like he wasn't sure if he should acknowledge what had happened before. I haven't been able to stop thinking about last time I continued my voice low, intimate. You seemed interested, but you held back. Why was that? He didn't answer at first, his hands still working on the faucet, but I could see the conflict in his eyes. It's just, I'm a professional, he said finally, his voice barely above a whisper. It wouldn't be right. Wouldn't it, I asked, stepping even closer now. I could feel the heat radiating off him. Who says what's right or wrong, Jacob? You're a grown man, and I'm a grown woman. We both know there's something here, something between us. You can feel it, can't you? He looked at me then, his jaw clenched, his eyes filled with the same conflict that had been there the last time. He was struggling, I could see it. He was trying so hard to stay professional, to keep that distance between us. But the tension had already built to the point of no return, and I wasn't about to let it go now. I let my hand brush against his chest, feeling his heartbeat racing beneath my fingertips, his breathing hitched, and for a moment I thought he might step back again, but then without warning he reached out and grabbed my arm, pulling me toward him. It wasn't rough, but it was firm. His face was inches from mine now, his breath warm against my skin. Margaret, he said, his voice low and intense, this isn't a game. I never said it was, I replied, my lips curling into a smile. There was no going back now. Jacob's hands were still on my arm, firm but hesitant, as if he didn't trust himself to let go. There was something raw and unguarded in his expression now, no more of the nervous politeness he had shown before. His eyes locked onto mine, and I could feel the tension between us shift into something deeper, something far more dangerous. I leaned in closer, letting my lips hover just inches from his. His grip tightened slightly, as though he was both holding me closer and trying to push me away at the same time. For a brief moment, I wondered if he would break, if he would walk out the door and never come back. But then his breathing quickened, and I knew he was feeling the same thing I was. Sometimes you just have to let go, I whispered, my voice barely audible, but filled with an unmistakable promise. And Jacob hesitated for one more beat, and then, as if something snapped inside him, he pulled me even closer and kissed me. It wasn't gentle or tentative like before. This kiss was filled with the weight of everything we had both been holding back. His lips moved against mine with a kind of urgency that sent a shiver down my spine, his hands gripping my waist as if he were afraid to let go. I kissed him back, my arms wrapping around his neck, pulling him closer still, feeling the heat between us building with every second. The world around us seemed to blur, the bathroom, the sink, the leak, all of it disappeared as his touch consumed me. His hands slid down to my hips, and I could feel the tension in his body, the way he was holding himself back, afraid of going too far but already too far gone. 
We pulled apart just long enough to catch our breath, our foreheads resting against each other, our breathing ragged and uneven. I could feel his heart pounding against his chest, his pulse racing beneath my fingers. The look in his eyes told me everything I needed to know this wasn't just a moment of weakness for him. This was something he had been fighting for a long time, something he hadn't wanted to admit to himself. What now, he asked, his voice barely above a whisper, his eyes searching mine for answers. I smiled, stepping back just enough to give him some space but not too far. I could feel the pull between us, the undeniable connection that had brought us to this point. I think you know the answer to that, Jacob, I said softly, my voice filled with a quiet confidence I hadn't felt in years. We've already crossed the line. Why stop now? For a moment he didn't say anything. He just stood there watching me, the conflict still flickering in his eyes. But then, with one last glance at the door, he reached for me again, his hands finding their way back to my waist, pulling me closer. This time, there was no hesitation, no second thoughts. This time, we both knew exactly what we were doing. The rest of that afternoon passed in a blur. Jacob and I barely made it out of the bathroom, the tension between us finally unraveling in a way that felt both inevitable and exhilarating. His hands were everywhere, my shoulders, my waist, my hips, his touch firm yet respectful, as if he were letting go of control but still holding on to some semblance of restraint. But I didn't want restraint. Not now. I hadn't felt like this in years, not since before the divorce. My life had been filled with routine for so long dinners alone, quiet nights in front of the TV, the occasional call from my grown children. I hadn't realized how much I had been craving this, how much I needed to feel wanted again, desired. Jacob kissed me deeply, his lips trailing down my neck, his hands sliding down to grip my hips. I let out a soft gasp, my head falling back as I gave in to the moment. There was something intoxicating about being with him, this young, strong man who seemed to see me in a way no one had in so long. It was more than just physical attraction, it was a connection that went deeper, something neither of us had expected but couldn't deny. We eventually made our way to the bedroom, the air between us charged with a kind of energy I hadn't felt in years. As we lay together, tangled in the sheets, I couldn't help but smile to myself, feeling more alive than I had in what felt like a lifetime. I've never done anything like this, Jacob murmured, his voice low and husky as he lay beside me, his fingers tracing lazy circles on my arm. Neither have I, I admitted, my voice just as soft. He turned to look at me, his expression filled with something I hadn't expected vulnerability. I shouldn't have, he said, shaking his head slightly, but I don't regret it. I placed my hand on his chest, feeling his heartbeat beneath my fingertips, and smiled softly. Neither do I. We lay there in silence for a while after that, both of us lost in our own thoughts. The weight of what had just happened hung in the air between us, but it wasn't uncomfortable. It was as if we had both crossed a line we didn't know existed, but neither of us wanted to go back. Eventually, Jacob sat up, glancing at the clock. I should go, he said, his voice filled with a reluctance that mirrored my own. I've been here longer than I planned. You don't have to, I said, though I knew he couldn't stay. He hesitated, looking at me like he wanted to stay, but then he shook his head. I don't want this to be awkward, he said, his voice soft but firm. I don't want you to think I was just, you know. I smiled, understanding what he meant. I don't, I said, sitting up beside him. You're a good man, Jacob. We both needed this, and I'm glad it happened. But I'm not expecting anything more than what this was. He looked relieved, though there was still a hint of confusion in his eyes, like he wasn't used to things being this simple. So you're really okay with everything? No weird feelings or anything? I laughed softly, shaking my head. No, Jacob, no weird feelings. It was just one of those moments. No strings, no pressure. 
He nodded slowly, as if he were still trying to process the simplicity of it all. Okay, he said after a long pause. I guess I'll see you around. Maybe, I said, teasing him just a little. If my sink breaks again, you'll be the first one I call. That made him smile, and he stood up, grabbing his tools and slinging his bag over his shoulder. But before he left, he turned back to me one last time. Margaret, he said, his voice soft but filled with sincerity. I don't regret it. I just want you to know that. I smiled, watching as he opened the door. Neither do I. And just like that, he was gone. In the days that followed, I found myself thinking about Jacob more than I should have. Every time I walked past the sink, I remembered the way he had looked at me, the way his hands had trembled slightly when I touched his arm. I remembered the heat of his kiss, the way his body had pressed against mine, the way he had hesitated, then finally given in. It had been so long since I had felt like that, since I had felt anything like that. I hadn't expected him to call again. I figured he had probably convinced himself it was a one-time thing, that it shouldn't happen again, and maybe he was right. Maybe it shouldn't have happened in the first place. But I didn't regret it. Not for a second. Still, I wasn't sure if I'd ever see him again. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to. The rational part of me knew that this was dangerous territory, that there was an age gap, a power dynamic, societal expectations, and the very real possibility that we were playing with fire. But the part of me that had felt so alive in his arms didn't care about any of that. I knew that if he called, I wouldn't say no. And then, one afternoon, about a week after he had left, my phone rang. The moment I saw his name flash on my phone screen, my heart skipped a beat. I hadn't been expecting it, hadn't even been hoping for it, but there it was his name, his number, a doorway back to the thrill of what we'd shared. Hey, his voice was tentative, cautious like he wasn't sure if he should be calling. I was just, I wanted to check on the faucet, you know, make sure everything's still working fine. There was a pause, and I could hear the uncertainty in his voice, as though he were trying to convince himself that this was still just a professional call. But we both knew better. The faucet is fine, I replied, letting my voice drop just slightly, enough to let him know that I wasn't talking about the sink. But there's another issue you might be able to help me with. Another pause. I could almost hear his heartbeat quickening on the other end of the line, the hesitation that told me he was weighing his options, deciding whether or not he should come back. I'll be there in an hour, Jacob said, his voice barely above a whisper, like he was unsure of the decision he had just made. But I knew, deep down, that once again he couldn't stay away any more than I could resist asking him back. When I hung up the phone, a wave of anticipation washed over me. It had been a long time since I felt this kind of excitement, a mixture of nervous energy and raw desire, coursing through me like a current. I told myself it was just a momentary indulgence, nothing serious, nothing lasting. But the truth was, it had already become more than that. I spent the next hour pacing around the house, straightening up things that didn't really need to be straightened, trying to calm the excitement that was building inside me. This wasn't like me. I had never been the type to lose control, to let myself get swept up in something so reckless. But with Jacob, all of those carefully constructed walls I'd built over the years seemed to crumble. When he finally arrived, I felt that same rush all over again. He stood in the doorway, hesitant but clearly drawn to the pull between us. His eyes met mine, and I saw the same flicker of uncertainty that had been there the last time. But there was something else, too something darker, more intense. He stepped inside, and I could feel the electricity between us grow. We didn't say much as I led him to the bathroom, pretending that I had some small issue that needed fixing, but we both knew why he was really there. As soon as we were alone in the bathroom, the air between us shifted. Jacob tried to focus on the task at hand, his hands fiddling with the faucet, but I could see the way his fingers trembled slightly. He was nervous, 
but so was I, nervous about what we were doing, but more than that nervous about how much I wanted this. I stepped closer, watching as he pretended to inspect the faucet, his body tense, his eyes fixed on the task. The silence between us was heavy, thick with unspoken desire. Finally, I couldn't take it any more. I reached out, placing my hand lightly on his shoulder, feeling the warmth of his skin through his shirt. Jacob froze under my touch, his entire body going rigid. For a moment he didn't move, didn't even breathe. But then, slowly, he turned to face me, his eyes filled with the same conflict I had seen before. Jacob, I whispered, my voice soft but insistent. You don't have to pretend any more. His breath hitched, and for a moment I thought he might pull away again, that he might leave just like last time, but then something shifted in him. His expression changed his resolve breaking, his defenses crumbling and without another word, he pulled me into his arms, his lips crashing against mine with a force that left me breathless. It was different this time. There was no hesitation, no second guessing. This time Jacob wasn't holding back. His hands roamed over my body, his touch filled with a kind of urgency that sent shivers down my spine. I kissed him back, my fingers tangling in his hair as I pressed myself closer to him, losing myself in the intensity of the moment. We didn't stop. Not this time. The bathroom felt too small, too confined for what was happening between us. Without breaking the kiss, Jacob lifted me up, carrying me to the bedroom where the boundaries between us dissolved entirely. The hours that followed were a blur of sensation and emotion, the world outside fading away as we gave in to the desire we had both tried so hard to ignore. Jacob's hands moved over my body with a kind of reverence, a need that matched my own, and in those moments nothing else mattered. I felt alive more alive than I had in years. It was as if the years had melted away, and I was no longer the woman who had spent so much of her life wrapped in routine, in the quiet loneliness of a big, empty house. With Jacob I felt wanted, desired. There was no shame, no guilt, only the heat between us, and the shared understanding that we both needed this— Jacob's touch was both tender and demanding, a mixture of control and release. He kissed me with a hunger that took me by surprise, his lips exploring mine with a passion that made my heart race. I kissed him back with equal fervor, pulling him closer, unwilling to let the moment slip away. As we lay tangled together afterward, our bodies spent, the silence between us was comforting rather than awkward. I could feel Jacob's breath on my neck, slow and steady, as his fingers absent-mindedly traced patterns on my skin. I closed my eyes, savoring the warmth of his body next to mine, the weight of his presence. Neither of us spoke for a long time. There was no need for words. We both knew what had just happened was more than just a fleeting moment of passion. It was something deeper, something that neither of us had expected but couldn't deny. For the first time in years I felt truly seen, not as a sixty-year-old woman, not as someone's ex-wife, but as a person, as a woman who still had the capacity to feel, to desire, to live. But reality has a way of creeping back in, no matter how much you try to hold it at bay. As the hours passed, I began to feel the weight of what had happened settling over me. Jacob was young so much younger than me, and while the age difference hadn't seemed to matter in the heat of the moment, I knew it couldn't be ignored forever. I glanced over at Jacob, who was still lying beside me, his eyes closed, his breathing even and peaceful. He looked content, but I wondered how long that contentment would last, how long before he realized the complications of what we were doing, how long before he started to pull away. The thought of it sent a pang of fear through me. I hadn't planned for this. I hadn't planned to feel anything more than a passing attraction. But now, lying here beside him, I knew it was more than that. I had grown attached to him more attached than I had ever intended. I sat up slowly, careful not to wake him, and wrapped the blanket around myself. 
I stared out the window, watching as the last rays of the afternoon sun disappeared behind the trees, leaving the room bathed in a soft, golden glow. This couldn't last. I knew that. The rational part of me knew that this was temporary, that whatever we had shared was fleeting, but another part of me, a part one, hadn't acknowledged until now wanted it to last, wanted Jacob to stay. And that terrified me. The days that followed were filled with a strange mixture of longing and uncertainty. Jacob and I continued to see each other, but something had changed. He was still kind, still attentive, but there was a distance between us now, an unspoken tension that neither of us could ignore. I knew it wasn't intentional. Jacob was trying to hold on to whatever we had, but I could see the conflict in his eyes every time we were together. He was young, with his whole life ahead of him, and I couldn't help but wonder if he had started to regret the path we had taken. The age difference, which had once felt like a thrilling taboo, now seemed to loom over us like a shadow. I could see the way people looked at us when we were out in public, the curious glances, the judgmental stares. It didn't matter that I felt younger when I was with Jacob, that he made me feel alive in a way I hadn't felt in years. To the outside world, we were something unnatural, something that didn't fit. And slowly, I began to feel the weight of that judgment. One evening, as we sat together on the couch, Jacob reached for my hand. His touch was warm, comforting, but there was something in his eyes that made my heart sink. I've been thinking, he said, his voice hesitant, as though he wasn't sure how to begin, about us. I felt a lump form in my throat, but I nodded, urging him to continue. This is complicated, Margaret, he said, his voice soft but firm. I don't regret anything, but I don't know how to make this work. I knew what he meant. I had been dreading this conversation, but I knew it was inevitable. We had crossed a line, and now we were both struggling to figure out where we stood. You don't have to explain, I said, my voice calm, even though my heart was racing. I know this is difficult. Jacob looked at me, his eyes filled with a sadness that I hadn't expected. I don't want to hurt you, he said, but I can't keep pretending that this is normal. His words hit me like a punch to the gut, but I forced myself to stay composed. I had known this was coming. I had known that our relationship was built on shaky ground, that it couldn't last forever, but knowing it didn't make it any easier. After that conversation, things between us began to unravel. We still saw each other, but the easy intimacy we had once shared was gone, replaced by an awkwardness that neither of us could shake. I could feel Jacob pulling away, bit by bit, even though he was trying not to. I didn't want to admit it, but I was afraid. Afraid of losing him, afraid of going back to the life I had before. The quiet loneliness of my house, the empty days that stretched out in front of me, it all seemed unbearable now, after everything I had felt with Jacob. One evening I sat alone in the living room, staring at my phone, willing it to ring, Jacob had promised to come by that afternoon, but hours had passed, and there had been no sign of him. I felt a knot of anxiety forming in my chest. He was pulling away, and I didn't know how to stop it. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, my phone buzzed. It was a text from Jacob. I'm sorry, I can't make it tonight. I need some time to think. I stared at the message, my heart sinking. I had known this was coming, but seeing it spelled out in black and white made it all the more real. I didn't respond. I didn't know how to. Instead, I sat there in the dark, the quiet of the house pressing in on me like a weight I couldn't escape. The thrill that had once filled me was gone, replaced by a hollow emptiness that I hadn't expected. I had thought that this was just a fling, something that would make me feel alive for a little while before we both moved on. But it was more than that now. I had let myself care for him, and now I was paying the price. A week passed, and Jacob didn't call. 
I tried to keep myself busy, filling my days with tasks that didn't really matter, but the emptiness followed me everywhere. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was ending, that whatever we had shared was slipping through my fingers, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. And then one evening, just as the sun was setting, my phone rang. It was Jacob. Can I come over, he asked, his voice quiet, almost hesitant. Of course, I replied, though I already knew what was coming. When he arrived, there was a tension in the air that hadn't been there before. He looked tired, as though he hadn't slept in days, and I could see the conflict etched in every line of his face. We sat down in the living room, the silence between us heavy with unspoken words. I waited for him to speak, but he seemed to be struggling with what to say. Margaret, he began, his voice soft, I've been doing a lot of thinking. I nodded, my heart pounding in my chest. I care about you, he continued, his eyes locking onto mine, more than I ever thought I would. But I can't keep doing this. I can't pretend that the age difference doesn't matter. I can't pretend that this isn't complicated. I felt tears prick at the corners of my eyes, but I forced them back, determined to stay composed. I had known this was coming, but that didn't make it any easier. I understand, I said, my voice barely above a whisper. Jacob looked at me, his expression filled with regret. I don't want to hurt you, Margaret, but I think it's best if we end this now before it gets even more complicated. I nodded, unable to find the words to respond. I had known all along that this couldn't last, but knowing it didn't make the pain any less real. Jacob reached for my hand, squeezing it gently, as if trying to comfort me in a moment that offered little solace. His touch was warm, familiar, and yet it felt distant like a reminder of something that was slipping away. I'm sorry, he whispered, his voice thick with emotion. I never meant for it to get this far, but I just don't know how to make this work. I looked at him, my heart breaking quietly in my chest. He was right. We had crossed a line that had felt exhilarating at the time, but now the reality of it all was sinking in. The age difference, the secrecy, the uncertainty of where this could lead it was too much, and we both knew it. I don't regret anything I said softly, my voice steady despite the lump in my throat. I don't want you to think that. Jacob's eyes softened, and for a moment I thought I saw a flicker of hesitation, like he was reconsidering his decision. But then, just as quickly, it was gone. I don't either, he said, his voice barely above a whisper, but I can't keep pretending that this is something it's not. I nodded, knowing that there was nothing more to say. We had shared something real, something beautiful, but it wasn't meant to last and that was the hardest part of all accepting that some things, no matter how powerful they feel in the moment, aren't meant to be forever. For a few moments we just sat there in silence, his hand still wrapped around mine. It was as if we were both trying to hold on to the last shred of what we had, knowing full well that it was already slipping away. Finally, Jacob stood up, his movements slow and deliberate, like he was giving himself time to process what was happening. He glanced around the room, as if committing it to memory, and then looked back at me. Take care of yourself, Margaret, he said quietly. You too, Jacob, I replied, my voice calm but filled with the weight of everything we weren't saying. He lingered for a moment longer then turned and walked toward the door. I watched him go, my heart aching in a way I hadn't expected. The door closed softly behind him, and just like that, he was gone. The house felt impossibly quiet after he left, the silence pressing in on me like a heavy fog. I sat there for a long time, staring at the door, trying to make sense of everything that had happened. The thrill, the connection, the passion, it had all been real but now it was over. I stood up slowly, my body heavy with exhaustion, and made my way to the bedroom. 
The bed felt too big, too empty without him beside me, and as I lay there in the dark, I couldn't help but wonder if I had made a mistake. Had I let myself fall too far? Had I allowed myself to feel too much? But even as the sadness washed over me, I knew that I wouldn't change a thing. What I had shared with Jacob had awakened something in me, something I hadn't felt in years. It reminded me that I was still capable of desire, of passion, of living. And for that, I would always be grateful. The days that followed felt like they were moving in slow motion. The quiet routines of my life returned the same familiar patterns, the same empty spaces. But something had changed. Even though Jacob was gone, the spark he had reignited within me still flickered, refusing to die out completely. I found myself thinking about him often. I wondered what he was doing, how he was feeling. I knew that ending things had been the right decision for both of us, but that didn't make the longing disappear. It lingered in the background, a quiet ache ache that I couldn't quite shake. I tried to distract myself with small tasks, cleaning the house, organizing my bookshelves, taking long walks around the neighborhood. But no matter what I did, the memories of Jacob lingered in the corners of my mind, teasing me with the possibility of what could have been. One afternoon, as I was sorting through some old photo albums, I came across a picture of myself from years ago, young, vibrant, full of life. I stared at it for a long time, trying to reconcile the woman in the photo with the woman I had become. I had spent so many years trying to fit into the mold of what was expected of me a good wife, a good mother, a responsible adult, but in doing so I had lost a part of myself. Jacob reminded me of that part, the part that longed for adventure, for connection, for something more than just going through the motions, and even though our relationship had ended, I couldn't help but feel grateful for the time we had shared. He had given me something I hadn't realized I needed a reminder that I was still alive, still capable of feeling. Weeks turned into months, and slowly the ache of missing Jacob began to fade. It didn't disappear completely. There were still moments when I thought of him, when I felt that familiar tug of longing. But those moments became less frequent, and the emptiness in my heart began to fill with something else. Acceptance. It can... I knew now that our relationship had been a temporary reprieve from the monotony of my life, a brief but intense connection that had brought me back to myself, and while it hadn't lasted, it had served its purpose. I had changed. I could feel it in the way I carried myself, in the way I approached my days. The quiet loneliness that had once filled my house no longer felt so suffocating. I had found a way to reclaim my space, to make it my own again. I started reconnecting with old friends, reaching out to people I hadn't spoken to in years. I joined a local book club, something I had always wanted to do but never made the time for. I took up painting, filling my afternoons with splashes of color and creativity that brought me a sense of peace I hadn't felt in years. And through it all, I kept the memory of Jacob tucked away in a quiet corner of my heart. I didn't dwell on it, but I didn't dwell on it, but I didn't push it away either. It was a part of my story now, a chapter that had helped shape the person I was becoming. One evening, months after Jacob had left, I found myself sitting on the back porch, a glass of wine in hand, watching the sun set over the horizon. The sky was painted in shades of pink and gold, the air cool and crisp with the promise of autumn. As I sat there, I realized something I hadn't noticed before. I was content, not just with the quiet, solitary life I had rebuilt for myself, but with the knowledge that I had lived, that I had allowed myself to feel something real, even if it hadn't lasted. Jacob had come into my life unexpectedly, and just as unexpectedly he had left, but the mark he had left on me remained. He had reminded me that life doesn't have to follow a prescribed path, that sometimes the greatest experiences come from the most unexpected places. I took a sip of my wine, smiling to myself as I thought about the future. It was uncertain, of course. I didn't know what lay ahead, but for the first time in a long time, I wasn't afraid of the unknown. 
I had rediscovered a part of myself that I had thought was lost forever, and that was enough. As the sun dipped below the horizon, I stood up and made my way inside. The house felt warm, welcoming, no longer the cold, empty space it had once been. It was mine now, a reflection of who I was and who I was becoming. And as I closed the door behind me, I couldn't help but feel a quiet sense of hope. Whatever came next, I knew I could face it. Because I had already faced the hardest part letting go,